Hi everybody, Zeef Simon here. I'm the creator of Surgical Master, the surgical training for dentists. Welcome to another instant replay, which is a presentation I record shortly after a surgery where I give you a surgical recap, tell you what happened, give you some tips and tricks, and also talk about the lessons that I've learned from the case. And in this instant replay, I'm going to talk about suturing technique of a relatively large flap. How do we close a big gap? And what's, what's the best way to do this? And when I looked at the surgical site at the end of the procedure, it reminded me of those warning signs in subway stations that warn you about minding the gap. Basically telling you, be careful not to fall into the gap between the platform and the train. That could be you know, very painful, very damaging. So I'm gonna share with you how to close up this flap and what, what is the technique that I used. So the procedure that I just completed was a sinus augmentation procedure. Everything went very well. I chose the lateral window technique and augmented the sinus and through, the, through the, uh, the window. You're looking at the bone graft at the end of the procedure. And you're also looking at a relatively large flap, which is the key to success, in my opinion, for this procedure. So you have good visibility, so you can perform a good lift. That also entails to create a vertical releasing incision away from the window. So we can close this up very, very nicely and tight, and we get good healing. So this is the radiograph at the end of the procedure. There's a, a vertical, uh, vertical lift. And uh, the question now is, how do we close this gap? Do we start with the vertical releasing incision? Do we start with the uh, relatively large flap on the edentulous ridge? You know, what do we do next? How do we close up this gap? So really, I'd like you to go over uh, a certain thought process. I'll, I'll share with you what I'm thinking. The first thing that I'm thinking is, do we need to primarily close this flap? Do we need to have primary closure with no gaps, no opening? How critical is it uh, for a sinus lift? It's very, very critical. We need to make sure that everything is nice and tight. Uh, we're expecting some swelling. Uh, that's uh, a very common side effect of this procedure. So the tissue will swell for the first day or two uh, throughout the, uh, through the inflammatory process. So we're expecting a lot of swelling. This swelling can create flap instability. So we need to choose a suturing technique that will be very, very stable. And we also need to look into what type of tissue quality is in the site. What's, what type of tissue are we suturing and once we have the answer for all of those questions, then we can pick our suture material and the size and the technique. So for this, this procedure, we definitely need primary closure. We're expecting quite a bit of swelling. That, uh, that's the nature of the procedure. And we're dealing with mostly good tissue quality. The palatal tissue is very nice and thick. So for this surgery, for this suturing, I picked three types of suture. Sutures. One is a Gore-Tex 4.0 and two resorbable gut sutures. One is a gut 4.0 and one is a 5.0 and I'll show you how I use them. And I also chose three techniques that I'll combine all together to get a nice and tight closure. The first one being a simple interrupted. The second one is a horizontal mattress. And the third is a continuous suture with interlocking. And once you chose the right suture material and the right techniques, you'll notice that your suturing is getting better and better and you're getting the suturing results that you want. So the question is, where do we start? Do we start with the edentulous ridge uh, or do we start with the vertical? My recommendation is start with the vertical. If you start with the ridge, you may get nice closure because there'll be some flexibility coming from the mucosa. However, you may run out of tissue, you may leave some gaps where the vertical is. So I definitely recommend start aligning those interproximal papillae. Start by suturing the vertical releasing incision. And here I'm using a Gore-Tex 4.0, a simple interrupted suture, and aligning the tissue between tooth number 11 and number 12. And I also added two gut sutures on the vertical releasing inc incision where the gingiva is. Once I have this closed up, I already have the flap aligned, and I will add one more Gore-Tex suture 
to the distal of tooth number 12. So we know that when we get to suturing the edentulous ridge, we will not get any openings in the vertical releasing incision. So that, that is the first step. The second step is to use a horizontal mattress suture to suture the, the uh, edentulous ridge. And the idea behind the horizontal mattress is to get very nice and tight closure, a very quick closure, and also in anticipation uh, for a lot of swelling after the procedure. So the way the horizontal mattress suture works uh, is as follows. We start with the, uh, for example, the mesiobuccal mesio um, area, uh, entering the tissue through the attached tissue about maybe two to three millimeters from the edge of the flap. And then the suture material goes underneath the flap and exits the mesiopalatal area, right in here. And then we come back, we basically follow our footsteps, we come back through the distal palatal and exit through the distal buckle. Now once we tie the knot, the two edges of the flap will come together very nice and tight way with the connective tissue towards connective tissue. And I recommend you place perhaps two or three of those sutures to have a quick closure of the large flap. So at the moment, I placed three horizontal mattress sutures. And at the, at the moment, the flap is aligned. Um, you know, it's still not finished because there are still small gaps and there's still some gaps on the distal, but the uh, flap is now aligned and ready for the last suture, wi which is a continuous suture, a continuous with interlocking suture. And the idea behind the continuous suture is to basically seal the deal, fin finish the deal. We will now close up the remaining gaps in a very nice and tight way. Now, every continuous suture always starts with an anchor. You have to have a, have a very good anchor so nothing opens up. So you start basically with a simple interrupted suture where you just leave the needle with the large thread still attached. And then there are a couple ways to do this. You basically can go in and out uh, from buckle to palatal, buckle to palatal. But I recommend instead of doing that, create some interlocking, create some stability points just in case this continuous suture opens up, you'll have some protectors, you'll have some safety. And this is the, these are the interlocking sutures. And, and we do this by twisting the loop and passing the needle through it multiple times so throughout the suturing process, you'll have some of those interlocking to ensure that everything is nice and closed. So once the edentulous site is uh, com completely uh, closed up and sutured, you can now complete the vertical releasing incision. Remember, we didn't complete it yet. We still have the mucosa part that is not, uh, not sutured yet, not completed at the moment. And all it takes is adding uh, perhaps two or three more GUT 5.0 sutures and make sure that everything is nice and tight. Now, if you want to be really nice to your assistant, when you're done with your suturing, take the needle and with the needle holder with the castro and place the sharp end uh, in between the holder and put it on the surgical tray. This way, nobody gets poked and your assistant will definitely appreciate it. So in order to close a large flap, we are going to use three types of sutures two types of gut sutures, one is a 4 one is a 5 and also a Gore-Tex suture for the mostly the horizontal mattress. And we use three techniques, the simple interrupted, a horizontal mattress for the tight closure, and at the end, we added some uh, continuous interlocking gut sutures and a few interrupted gut sutures in the vertical releasing incisions. So this is how you close the gap. So definitely, uh, make sure that you follow these recommendations so when, when you get to suture those uh, large flaps, you can predictably close them up and ensure that your patient is healing well uh, with no complications. I hope this information was very useful for you, to you and I hope that when you uh, encounter a situation where you need to suture a large gap, a large flap, uh, you'll know what to do. It'll be relatively easy for you. And if you're interested in more suturing techniques, more interesting procedures, and more instant replay, visit me at surgicalmaster.com, and I look forward to seeing you in the future.